Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rumbling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because they can, and they continue with Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition. I have nothing else to do apart from DLC uh, and continuing the main quest, which is to go and speak with the Quarians. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm sure I explored those planets because this is Haystar. It was here in Mass Effect 2, but out of sort of obligation, I will uh, visit the other system as well mm, and see what's up there. Uh, Amut is an enormous hydrogen helium gas giant with a mass approximately nine times that of, that of Jupiter and nearly 2,900 times that of Earth. Despite the massive pressure, its core has failed to ignite a fusion reaction, qualifying it as a failed star. It is believed to have captured all of the pla other, other planet-sized bodies in the solar system as moons or as impact events, leading to the name Devourer. Not intimidated by this phenomena, the Geth have colonized many of Amut's moons and skimmed the hydrogen from Amut's upper atmosphere. Amut is in Geth space. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Okay, I think there's nothing here. Faster than light jump successful. Although I couldn't be can be cer can't be certain because uh, while I have not discovered anything yet, uh, the, the 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 percentage doesn't even display. But often in in plot critical uh, places, uh, there are no additional uh, things to gather. A formerly a Quarian colony, Haystorm was established to observe the phenomena on Dolan, the system's parent star. Dolan appears to be unstable, with a high possibility of erupting prematurely into a red giant. Haystorm was lo lost to the Geth in uh, 1896 CE, soon after the communication from the planet and its uh, attendant space station ceased. The Geth have shown no signs of treating Dolan as a threat over the past three centuries, beyond establishing several space stations near it. Do do Dolan's magnetic eruptions and solar output overwhelm nearby communications, and it's unclear how the Geth have con compensated. Today, spy probe scans indicate orbital construction around Haystorm, housing thousands of Geth platforms and an unknown number of Geth software mines. It is not known how the Geth are on the planet's surface. Spy probes face inter interference from Dolan, making remote scanning difficult. Resource estimations based on Geth mining, refining and fabricating practices suggest that the planet has at least 20 more years of use before it is exhausted. Intelligence experts speculate that the Geth have not exploited all of their resources because they wish to keep some in reserve for repairs. Haystorm is a Geth stronghold. Military spy drones using cutting-edge stealth technology are the only vehicles to have returned from Geth space unharmed. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Uh, once a starship refueling station for the Quarians, Harum has expanded under Geth rule. Thousands of orbital platforms surround the planet and its many moons, uh, refining helium into helium-3. A vast Geth fleet travels between Harum and Haystorm, preventing all but the most stealthy of spy drones from discovering any information about it. Current estimates place the Geth fleet numbers between 5,000 and 10,000 ships, with unknown levels of armament. And most intelligence estimates that approaching Har uh, Harum is tantamount to suicide. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Population 250 to 500,000 platforms, colony occupied in 1895 CE. Largest station Hell's Hive, dinner station. A 
and a dwarf planet, Gotha has a pressure cooker atmosphere that brings its surface temperature to scorching levels. Carbon dioxide and ethane are plentiful in the planet's hazy atmosphere. There has been some speculation in the mining community as to whether the quarians mined out all of the precious metals before they fled the system some three centuries ago. Rumors abound that anyone willing to brave the guess could find loads of naturally occurring diamonds on Gotha, but it is likely uh, just a starship legend. And Gotha is in Get's space. Yeah, I don't think there's anything here. And Quarian Envoy Ship. This diplomatic frigate is uh, like no Quarian ship on record. Its hull is a relatively low temperature and appears to be venting heat, heat in a similar man manner to the Normandy when it comes out of stealth mode. Um, how the Quarians developed this high-tech vessel is unknown, but its hailing frequencies are open and welcoming messages are being tight-beamed to the Normandy. Commander Shepard, a pleasure to see you again, though I wish it were under better circumstances. I had hoped for your support in the fight against the Reapers. What's going on? Seventeen days ago, with precision strikes on four Geth systems, the Quarians initiated the war to retake our homeworld. Which was a clear violation of our agreement with the Council to avoid provoking the Geth. A treaty violation is nothing compared to recovering our homeworld and advanced AI technology. Uh, this is mind-numbingly stupid. Like, the, the, the Quarians are persistently wrong uh, on the Geth issue from the very beginning, but even disregarding that, this is literally the worst time to start another war on top of the ongoing war that threatens the entirety of the galaxy. Like, it boggles my mind how stupid the Quarians are, and that makes me rather unsympathetic towards them. Like, I don't want them to get killed, and I will do my best to avoid that, but what I'm saying is, if they do all get killed, that's entirely on them. Like, they, they have consistently uh, wronged the Geth, and in each uh, encounter with them, they were sort of digging their own grave. Uh, and they continue to do it now, even amid uh, the invasion by a ex by, by, by an extra galactic force of sentient ancient machines that want to genocide us all. Uh, like, that's so stupid, I can't even waste breath to try to explain that. Um, uh, asking about their history is kind of dumb, I know it, because I've played Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2, but I will choose this option just to hear them reiterated because it might be interesting your homeworld you mean Rannoch? correct commander 300 years ago we lost our world to our own ai creations the geth after we attempted to kill them we didn't try to kill them chorus we tried to deactivate them it wasn't murder uh, it was like okay best case scenario i guess if you if you wanted to hang on uh, on like organic analogies was you tried to put them all into a coma so that you have so that you would have enough time to brainwash them into slavery uh, which is actually potentially worse when you think about it so that doesn't do you any favors to to differentiate that from murder no it was murder commander the Quarians never intended to create a true AI. It was an accident. Which you chose to correct by trying to kill them. Don't bother. Admitting we were wrong would undercut the justification for this suicidal invasion plan. Uh, yeah, inviting, invading was a mistake, and I'm glad there's at least one reasonable person uh, among the Quarians. Uh, which is interesting because, um, as I talked about in Mass Effect 2, the game does kind of does does interesting things with Admiral Chorus because he's introduced 
it, mm, as a villain, kind of, because he's accusing Tali of treason, of treason right, uh, in Mass Effect 2. So you're naturally inclined to distrust him and dislike him. Uh, but the, 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 the switcheroo is that you care about Tali and therefore anyone who's against her uh, is like wrong is your initial assumption but actually he's like 98% correct the the only issue I have with him is that he tried to use the situation with Tali and her father he tried to scapegoat her uh, for political reasons even though she was actually innocent but he agreed to that in the end uh, I agree with the entirety of the rest of his message um, and uh, Generally, I think he's like the only sane man in the entirety of the of the Admiralty board, uh, and uh, Tali herself has a huge uh, blind spot when it comes to the Geth, because she is a by all accounts a good person, right? You like her; she's very likable. She's um, you know friendly and uh, sort of has a has, has a kind character but but she has a huge blind spot, blind spot when it comes to the geth because she doesn't actually consider uh, trying to kill them all to be wrong at least at the time of mass effect 2 she doesn't uh, she she thinks it's natural that the quarians want to take back their homeworld and if it uh, requires the destruction of the geth then she's okay with that but obviously i disagree you're throwing yourselves at the Geth? Again? And this time, we may have destroyed our people for good. We'd driven the Geth back to their home system, when this signal began broadcasting to all Geth ships. The Reapers. Under Reaper control, the Geth are significantly more effective. Our fleet is pinned in the home system. If we're going to win, we are... Wait! You insisted on involving the civilian ships, Admiral Geral. We need to retreat or we'll lose the life ships. Where's the signal coming from? Here. A Geth Dreadnought. It can outgun anything we've got and it's heavily defended. The Normandy stealth drive can get us in undetected. I could board, then disable the Reaper command signal. Yes. Cutting off the signal should throw the Geth into complete disarray. And while they're confused, you get to a mass relay and retreat. Good. Our civilian ships have seen too much fighting already. Are you certain you can disable the signal? We'll get you out of there safely, Admiral. Our newest Admiral has also volunteered to offer technical expertise. Tali Zora Vas Normandy, reporting for duty. Glad you could make it, Tali. Admirals, already a team to hit that dreadnought. Thank you, Commander. Admiral? It's mostly a formality. I'm an expert on the Geth. That you are. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. If I'd known it was this bad, I would have come sooner. You've had your own troubles. I'm sorry about Earth. We've got the largest fleet in the galaxy. If you can help us, we'll hit the Reapers with everything we've got. Or however much is left from this stupid war. I thought you'd support the invasion. No. After talking to Legion, I thought maybe there was a chance for peace. So why help them? I'm an admiral. People look to me for guidance. Public disagreement would divide the fleet. I'll get your people out of here safely, Tally. Thanks, Shepard. And just so you know, I need to keep things strictly business in front of the admirals. If you'd like to catch up, let's talk somewhere private. Sure thing. I'm ready to hit that dreadnought whenever you are. Uh, hmm. Is she on my ship now? Commander? I guess there are probably no new conversations. Commander. Because I, I doubt, doubt that counted as a full mission. Commander. 
Nothing to report. Shepherd. Yeah, I think I think I just need to uh, finish the dreadnought and then I'll be able to talk to her. Like I guess the only other place where she could Smith, be Shepherd. is in the war room. Oh, she is here. Mm, and so is Ran. Um, okay. Mm, I guess I can talk to them. While I'm here. Uh, is is Darozen here as well? I guess she wasn't even in that cutscene, so I doubt it. Shepard, the fleet is under heavy fire. We need to hit the Dreadnought. Which fleet does Admiral Zen command? Special projects. It's not a fleet per se. Just a few research vessels. Her technical breakthroughs have put us within striking distance of the home world. I'd like to know about your patrol fleet. In peacetime, the patrol fleet managed navigation, internal security, and intership conflicts or crimes. Now, we mostly guard the heavy fleet's flank. It's mostly light frigates or fighters. Tell me about the civilian fleet. Our civilian ships, medical vessels, and live ships. Admiral Chorus coordinates them. Though individual ships' captains still have power. In peacetime, they made up the bulk of our fleet. Now, our strength would even give the Turians pause. Tally said you had the largest fleet in the galaxy. The Turians have more dreadnoughts. Their overall military force is larger than our heavy fleet by far. But before we began this war, we jury-rigged every Quarian ship in the flotilla for battle. Even our live ships have cannons. That's stupid, because uh, the live ships are full of civilians, including kids and stuff, you know, whole families. Uh, that's insane. To, you know, it's stupid to begin with to start this war with the Geth right now, or start it at all, to be honest. Uh, but, but it's insane, certifiably insane, to strap guns to the life ships and just throw them into battle. You've converted them into dreadnoughts. That's a violation of the Treaty of Barrickson. Why live ships have firepower comparable to a dreadnought? Their primary purpose is food cultivation. You think the Council will buy that technicality? If need be. I'll apologize once this war is over. And in the meantime, you're putting your civilians in danger. Not casually, Commander. We keep them off the front lines, but we'll do whatever we must to win. I, that's actually not what I wanted... Uh... Not what I wanted Shepard to say. It's not crazy because it violates some kind of a treaty on dreadnoughts. It's it's crazy because it throws uh, you know hundreds of thousands of civilians into battle zones. What can you tell me about Admiral Garrel's heavy fleet? It was our main military force before the war, comprised of all Korean vessels suited for sustained combat. It can't compare to the Turian forces, of course, but we have a number of heavy frigates and advanced fighter forces. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you, Commander. That dreadnought is tearing through our fleet. Let me know when you're ready to hit it. So how did you end up back with your fleet, Tally? When the war started, the Admiralty Board asked for my help. I had more recent contact with the Geth than most of my people. They hadn't filled the spot on the board left by my father. I was invited in. It's just a technicality. I'm far too young to be a real Admiral. Don't sell yourself short, Tally. The Board needed your expertise. You needed the authority that comes with rank. How is it being back with the fleet? Right now, it's exhausting. I'm an admiral in the middle of a war. I just want us to get out of this alive. 
Everything else can wait. When this is over, I could use your help. I can't, Shepard. If we survive this, we'll have a homeworld. My people need me. You could help your people's homeworld by fighting the Reapers. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not thinking that far ahead yet. How did the war with the Geth get started anyway? Admiral Zen developed a scanning countermeasure that interferes with Geth active scans. It's like a flashbang grenade. It effectively crippled the Geth ships in combat. My fleet couldn't pass up the chance to attack. Uh, that does sound useful, but that's besides the point, because I think the entire concept is wrong. Uh, by the way, I'm not in love with this game's dialogue system, because more than once uh, I've been deceived by this short summary because it didn't e effectively portray what Shepard is going to say in the end, which, which has led to situations where I've said things that I wouldn't have said if I knew that he's going to say them. Could we use it to fight the Reapers? It only works against the Geth, unfortunately. Their AI lets them use extremely detailed LADAR pings. Zen's countermeasure overwhelmed them with garbage data. And it's useless now that the Reapers have upgraded their processing power. So what about Legion? It returned to Geth space after you turned yourself into the Alliance. And you haven't seen it since? I... Uh, Legion and I sent a few messages. I was hoping we could try negotiation. But I was outvoted three to two. Admiral Chorus was the only one who believed it would work. Any idea where Legion is now? No. In our last message, it told me that the Geth were having trouble reaching consensus. And then nothing? Maybe it was fighting the Reaper takeover? Or maybe it didn't want to give intel to an enemy? I could have warned it about the invasion. I didn't. You'd have been betraying your own people. I never wanted to be an admiral. Talk to you later, Tally. If you want to catch up in private, call me up to your cabin. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that before we go to the Dreadnought. Commander. Tally, I'm free if you'd like to come up. I'll just be a moment. Thanks for asking me up. I couldn't talk freely in front of Ron. You okay? No, no, I'm really not. Seventeen million lives are riding on me, and I don't know if I can save them. You're doing everything you can. If the fleet falls, it won't be because of you. I helped my father and... And Zen's ideas? The new tech that made an invasion too good to pass up? That's based on my father's work. If they die because of me? If... If I don't... We'll get them out of there safely, Tally. Speaking of my father, I owe you an apology. When they charged me with treason, and you turned over that evidence, I said things. You were grieving. You don't need to apologize. No, you were right. If I were exiled, I couldn't speak out against lunatics like Zen. I was too ready to sacrifice myself for the good of the fleet. I need to stop doing that. Good luck. I should get back before the admirals get into trouble again. I'll talk to you later. Mm, okay, so I'll just go and attack that Dreadnought.
Uh, Haza, an ice giant composed primarily of hydrogen and helium, is colored a striking aquamarine because of the small concentrations of methane, water, ice and ammonia. Its relatively small size is a curiosity to human astronomers who would have expected a larger hydrogen-helium gas giant to have accreted during the solar system's foundation. The Orians have driven the Geth away from the planet's helium-3 fueling machinery, but it's clear that the Geth put up a fight. Wreckage from the Quarian fighters litters the area, and more than one refueling station appears to have been blown apart by kinetic impacts into in a scorched earth tactic. Kadi is a low gravity. Is Kadi has a low gravity for a planet its size, which proved a significant boon to early Quarian explorers. Even before the discovery of Mass Effect technology, it was easy to extract Kadi's resources. When the Quarians first made contact with the Citadel species and gained access to Ezo, profits rose and orbital stations became a beehive of activity. Today, Cadiz and Lagrange points are littered with space space junk, including pieces of a Geth orbital station that must have massed at least a billion tons. Uh, such a station could have generated impressive kinetic barriers, but even these appear to have been insufficient against the Quarian attack. Uh, Adas is marginally warmer than Ranok, despite being further from its sun. Volcanic activity spews methane into Adas' atmosphere, and this haze retains heat in a greenhouse effect. Historically, the Quarians used the Geth to mine the planet, and when the Geth rebelled, the small Quarian population on and around Adas was quick quickly overrun. It is clear that the Quarian armada has not forgotten or forgiven. The remnants of Geth's space stations litter Adas' orbit. Now, now all shrapnel and fused metal, the Normandy sensors pick up a strange croaking sound, probably some kind of distress call from the Geth survivors left floating in space, condemned to eternal cold. Mm, the Migrant Fleet A flotilla of 50,000 craft Holding over 17 million Quarians, the Migrant Fleet is the largest array of spacefaring vessels in the known galaxy. It is a testament to the Quarians' strategic skill that these numbers have not dropped significantly during recent battles. The fleet is now on the far side of the star from Ranok to better cloak its movement from the Geth. Close to the star, the Normandy scanners can detect a nigh uncountable number of Geth satellites, satellites that use solar sails to self-correct their position. The Geth placed the ultra-lightweight ultra constructions around the sun to, correct, to collect energy, arranged in a vast array known as a Dyson bubble. Scattered among them are the space stations and servers that draw, draw power from the satellites through wireless tr energy transfer. Most of the space stations are wreckage now, and no small number of solar sails have also been destroyed. It appears that the Quarians began to destroy them, but were stopped before the attack was complete. Tikkun's asteroid belt is home to Uria. A, ro large ro a, la a rock large enough to qualify as a binary dwarf planet. Its companion, the asteroid Ato, is believed to have split off from the main body after an oblique impact. Both were heavily mined in the age of Quarian space exploration. Curiously, the Geth have built over the, the old Quarian space stations, even though the mined out asteroid has little obvious use. The current theory is that they provide a staging base to exploit other asteroids in the belt. Although the orange sun is only 90% the mass of Sol and half as luminous, Aranok is arid by Earth standards because it's formed closer to its star and has slightly less ocean coverage. Photosynthetic life is concentrated around rivers and oceans, with large expanses of desert in between. The importance of plant life and shade in ancient Quarian culture is evident in the translation of Aranok's name, World Garden. Uh, to a starship sensor, the most obvious feature of the Quarian homeworld is the numerous heat sources in the orbit. 
thousands of kids' space station will watch over the planet. Somewhere in the artificial swarm of the constructions lurks the Geth Armada, waiting for the moment to counter to counterattack. Population unknown. Quarian estimates on the number of the Geth range from tens from tens of millions to single digit billions. Estimates on the, of the number of Geth consciousnesses stored in the servers are far, far higher. I don't think there's anything on the scanner here. Uh, yeah, there, there, there isn't. Okay, so let's just attack the Geth Dreadnought. The scans of the Geth Dreadnought orbiting Rannoch reveal several uh, reveal an intimidating array of features, from an improved main gun and ultraviolet anti-ship lasers to intri increased thruster output. The Geth workforce never demands rests, wages, or autonomy, and in the creation of their flagship, they were limited only by time and raw materials. The damage inflicted by the Quarian fleet appears minor at best. Okay, this actually looks pretty kick-ass, and this has like a like a full faceplate, like a like a helmet. Th this looks very much like like some kind of a war armor. I'll choose this for now, and maybe then switch. Uh, I'll take Javik with me as well. Increase damage to armored units, mm, or grenade capacity by two. I'm not using it that much anyway, to be honest. Uh, increase damage by 40%. Grenades stay active for 15 seconds when attached. Attached. Okay, let's go for damage. Mm, and now I have only a couple of points left until I reach, reach level 60, which is the max. So let's just go into cryo ammo, I guess. We can armor, okay. Increase power duration by 50%, uh, increase damage and radius. Increase impact radius by 100%. In increase shield restoration by 50% when draining shields, barriers or powers from a synthetic enemy. 
increased damage by 40%. Uh, the, the drone was definitely useful in Mass Effect 2, e even, even just as a distraction. Um, drone explodes when destroyed. Uh, let's go for consistent damage upgrades. Upgrades the drone's short range attacks to deal 100%, uh, 170 points of damage. Uh, drone stuns enemies. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, upgrade the drone with lo long range rockets that deal 255. Five points of damage, or upgrade the drone's electrical pulse to jump and hit three additional targets. Uh, sabotage weapons and hack synthetics. Uh, deploy a holographic drone to electrocute enemies. Mm, okay, let's go for sabotage now. Uh, increase power duration. Um, Synthetics explode when destroyed. Uh, hacked synthetics fighting on your side move faster and do more damage. Increase duration by 100%. Sure. Increase damage by 100, attack range by 60. Uh, gives a 30% chance to knock down an electrocuted enemy, damage up to two additional nearby targets. We're approaching the Quarian home system. ETA to Rannoch, five minutes. What have you got from the comm buoys? Pretty much a big old shitstorm, Commander. I have detected several hundred unique ship signatures engaged in active combat. Yeah, like I said. Take us in, Joker. Stealth drive engaged. Only way they'll detect us is if you all start singing the Russian national anthem. I really, I really like this section. It's kind of trippy. And you can see the battle uh, through the holes. No wonder the Quarians were having trouble. That ship is enormous. It is 30% larger than an Alliance Dreadnought. Tally, you're gonna like the view. That's our demo vid. Well, it's currently also on fire, which is perhaps not the most calming.
are you doing, Shepard? The lack of gravity is a little disorienting. The Dreadnought has artificial gravity. You should be okay once you're on board. Until then, I'll make do with mag boots. Hey, take your time, Commander. We're fine until they, you know, look out a window. Get don't use windows, remember? Structural weakness. Like the Gath are just sitting there saying, those organics would never try the no windows thing twice. To be honest, why do the, do the Geth use artificial gravity? Uh, you, you'd think, you know, they are made of metal. I'm not sure if that's ferrous metal, but uh, even if not, they could make some kind of, you know, magnetic boots as Shepard himself has, because they don't need gravity for anything else other than, you know, sticking to surfaces. Uh, they, they don't have muscles, they, they don't breathe, they, they don't, uh, you know, I, I, I fail to see how they would be so um, dependent on having gravity, whereas not having gravity uh, on their ships would make it a lot harder for organics to assault them. Looks like the rest of the team isn't using the docking tube. So I'm guessing you'd rather not solo the Dreadnought. Not if I can help it. Ask Tally to get on the Dreadnought schematics. If she can point me at another docking tube, I'll override the controls and let the boarding party on. Like, by all accounts, this doesn't seem to make sense. To me. Any resistance? All quiet so far. They haven't detected us yet. Here, let me see if I can get this open. In the meantime, take a look at this. There, it's open. We're clear to go. Looks impressive. It's Admiral Zen's design. It transmits an energy pulse on contact that disrupts shields and synthetics. That'll be handy. So where are we headed? We're looking for an operations center. I can disable the Reaper command signal from there. Where's the closest one? Past their defense network and through a sensor cluster. So wait, wait a second. Does Javik not breathe oxygen? Does he not breathe at all? Does he not have lungs? Like, he's not using a helmet and he's not even using any kind of breathing apparatus. Anti-fighter lasers? They're using ultraviolet frequencies, not infrared. That's a lot more expensive and a lot more powerful. When the fleet rushed the Dreadnought, those lasers carved right through our ships. Come on, let's get to the op center before they lose more. I think 
I found that. Watch out! Get incoming! Preservation in these machines. Network intelligence. As we kill them, their attacks become more aggressive. You fought them before, Commander. Disable their shield. And take them down before they take off. Signals hitting all Geth processes. The Reapers have them completely under control. In my cycle, a race called the Jha used machines. The Jha team are synthetic symbiotes. The Reapers subjugated the Jha team as they have the Geth. Their mechanical swarms blotted out the sky. They were brutal, merciless. Kila, what did you do? We sent their star into supernova. That's not really an option here. Not yet. I destroyed a system to take out the Alpha Relay. It wasn't an easy decision. Combat data. What's the state of the battle? We're taking heavy losses. The Geth have a planetary defense cannon. It's ripping through our fleet. Is there anything we can do to help them? Just make their sacrifice worthwhile. Why do we need to find the operations center? Wouldn't any access console do? No. Anything we do here, the Geth could counter. Too many fault checks and redundancy levels for what we need to do. The Dreadnought's operations center is just ahead. Good. Let's get the Reaper signal and get the fleet out of here. The Hunters are moving in! I didn't even... 
operational look at how much data the dreadnought central processor is handling i think it's handling information from all get everywhere Dumb. It's meant for synthetics, not organics. 
Synthetics do not care for organic ease of use or aesthetic beauty. In some cases, they actively oppose it. Shouldn't be too much farther to the main battery. I'm surprised they'd send you on this mission, Tally. Even admirals are expected to serve. I'm better at hacking than I am ordering ships around.
They've stopped firing. We're safe as long as the maintenance lock is in place. Let's move. Come on, let's get out of here. We live another hour. Watch your shield! Stick to cover! Okay, that was stupid. Wait, I, I guess it didn't save? At all.
Păi, 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 trebuie să... So, I guess maybe it did, it did save when I crossed. So I think, yeah, yeah, this is the ladder that goes to the previous part. Okay, so I guess it did save. can save which is a bit annoying because I wanted to is understandable. Once free, we will submit to any restraints you deem necessary. I never thought I'd say this, but it's good to see you again. Likewise, Creator Zora. So what is this thing? It uses our networking architecture to broadcast the old machine command signal to all Geth simultaneously. Then getting you out of there will shut off the Reaper signal. Wait, you cannot simply remove the restraints. We are secured via hardware blocks nearby that shackle our operating protocols. The hardware blocks are on the far side of the room. Far side of the room, you said? Yes, deactivation should be simple. The Geth protected them against viral attack, not physical removal. How'd the Reapers get control of the Geth? They did not. The Creators attacked. The Geth wished to live. The old machines extended an offer. So we went to that Geth station and destroyed the heretics for what? Nothing? No. Removal of the heretics made the decision to ally with the old machines more difficult. Had the creators not attacked, it would have been unnecessary. We'll have you out of there soon. Yeah, so once again, thanks for breaking everything, Quarians.
Uh, okay, can I save? I can. So I will save here because this episode has been long enough. I'll free Legion next time. But for now, that's all for this one. I will see you in the next one. Bye.